Hello, welcome to episode two of my TT Gauge Layout Build. I'm James. And in the previous episode, you saw me install this depot and lay this track, as well as wiring it up. I was just about to add some point motors. So let me show you how I did that. So I had a look through my uh, point motor box and I have plenty of point motors to do this layout. So rather than go out and buy new ones, I'm just gonna use these. Um, obviously one of the problems would be if I've cut these too short, but if I just poke this one through here, try and line it up. And as you can see, it fits through nicely. So no issue there. Um, now I've got this bit of wire just uh, sandwiched between the blade and the rail, and that's gonna hold that roughly in the middle. So when I come to screw the point motor on, all I've got to do is just line that up to about the middle. Although I think we've all just heard the point move there. So I'm gonna have to do that again, but that's the idea. And then I'll just mark out where I need to screw this in. Um, now these point motors have the uh, throg switch, which you can see it's that spring and then there's a little washer there and it just slides along those contacts and that's how you can change the polarity on the frog. Um, there are same seat point motors which don't have that. Um, and when I first got them I didn't realise and I ended up wiring all these up. Absolute waste of time, you only needed the those two and that one I believe. But there we go. So I'm going to be doing that. Now attaching these seat point motors is not the easiest job in the world. Um, now I've done it before and I, I think I got the uh, idea of someone on YouTube where you make a jig exact same size as this um, circuit board, putting the holes in the same places and then um, getting a pin. Um, you centre the points, you have a side, run it through the top and then you mark on here, it wouldn't help if I actually point the camera at the points, wouldn't it? Um, you mark on here where the screws go through and then you screw through the top and then that allows you to always have the points in the right position. Um, I haven't done that. I've done a different method because uh, I did have a jig but I've lost it. Um, so I've just got two bits of card that hold the points in the middle because the wire kept falling out and it didn't work after a while. Um, so the point blades can't move and then as you can see here and then another card jig just to hold the pin in the middle and then that way I know I'm holding the point motor center. The only downside of doing it this way is you, you, you can't be 100% sure that you've got the point motor to the right angle of the point blade movement but as everything on this board is uh, to a 90 degree uh, as long as I've got it at a right angle I shouldn't have a problem. And as you can see I've moved the card and let's use the pin so that point moves nicely. Six more to go. Now one of the problems you might find is it doesn't matter how well you try and what your intentions are, sometimes points just might not quite line up with the holes you've made for them. As you can see here, the end of the tie bar can only just be seen through this hole. So I now need to open this hole up without damaging the track. Um, so to do this, uh, I've already done it on a couple of other points because as you've had the problem on a set this side, this one. Um, so I just put a bit of tape at about nine millimeter. So I know how far to drill. So I'm not gonna go mad and straight into the board and damage the points. So I just go in very, very slowly, very gingerly up to the tape mark and that will open the hole out so that you can fit your point motor and it will move. Uh, there we are then, that is all the point motors installed, they need wiring up at some point. But I've got all seven in and they've all got the clearance to swing the blades. So, these points are tricky, um, I think it's more practice makes perfect. But still, the proof will be in the pudding when uh, I wire them up and test them that way. But at the moment, I mean, just... Remember, I can hear them clicking, so they definitely got the move. So there we are.
So I've just finished the mind nominally dull task of painting the rail sides, just to weather them. So they're uh, all sorted when I ballast and put uh, the concrete uh, hard surface around the rest of the depot. Um, so I've got four sidings on the layout. Uh, so they're gonna need some buffers. I have three sets of buffers at the moment because I bought these from West Hill Wagon Works and this came with the train set. So I'm gonna prime these and paint them up and then attach them to the layout. Now this is the point where I wanted to have some footage to show you how I was gonna build the uh, apron for the concrete base around the depot. Unfortunately, I hadn't pressed the record button nor realised that I hadn't repressed the record button and so that footage doesn't exist. So what I'm going to jump into is just me cutting this to shape to fit between the tracks because the 5mm board with a little bit of a mount board on top is just about the right height to the top of the rail with the cork underlay. So that's going to work out nicely to build my apron. So I've cut the foam board out to roughly make the shape of the base of um, the concrete, well, base. Um, so I'll sort of have a concrete cover and I'll probably tarmac the back as a car park. So that's all there, ready to go, put the cardboard on top. I need to add some more scenic features to this layout as well. Um, so I've roughly worked out where things are gonna go. I'm gonna have a fuel storage here. I'm gonna scratch build that. Um, using this card tube from a roll of tin foil. I think I can get two tanks out of that and scratch build something there. Um, I'm thinking of an embankment here, a tree line here, and then a sort of farm occupation bridge just to cover the um, entrance to the fiddle yard. And then as we come down the hill, the trees here, they start to clear away and then we sort of in an industrial state here. So we'll see the back of warehouses, um, the gate and entrance to the depot will be here. And then in this corner here, I'm thinking of having another large warehouse. So it's sort of old railway land that's just been built and developed on. Yeah, that's the kind of the idea. And at the front, um, I'm going to lay two lines to represent a main line, sort of a diorama really than actual working line. And then I'm here, I'm going to put in a signal box. Um, so I bought the Pico... GWR signal box. Um, I'm trying to not model the Western region. Uh, I want to do for Eastern, so I'm going to try and sort of, well, make this look a little bit more Eastern, but it's going to be a disused signal box anyway, so boarded up windows or battered and a bit run down. Um, we'll see how I get on with that. But that's the plan. So I'm just working on a low relief warehouse to go just behind the depot on the layout. Um, so I've used a mount board for the base of it and I'm just making some panelling with some thin card, just cutting it into rectangular blocks, gluing it on. And then in the middle here, I have some windows. Um, and to do that, and get some acetate. I'm going to paint it black on the back. And when you turn it around, it'll like have a shiny gloss black, sort of um, blacked out window effect. And then I'll put some window frames around that. And then hopefully that should uh, look the part for the uh, low relief warehouse. Now, and that's that uh, low relief warehouse in place. I've got to do the glazing and then it needs paint in. Um, I think that's all right. Definitely starting to alter the layouts look now, just by adding a few buildings onto it. So I'm just gonna carry on doing that. Um, the signal box and the bridge and the fuel storage, I think. So uh, that's the basis of the two warehouses done. I'm going to move on to the fuel storage tanks now. And as I said uh, previous, I've got this kitchen foil tube. Uh, which I think is just about the right size. Um, I'm just trying to work out how to make the ends 
um, because they should be sort of, uh, I say tapered, but you know, they're not flat. They've sort of got a bow to them. And uh, I'm not quite sure how to model this in card. Uh, I don't really want it flat. I'll go with flat if I can't work it out. I, I'm gonna try and attempt to do a few circles, um, sort of get smaller and smaller, and then get some, uh, something like, maybe, maybe not das clay, maybe like a model filler or something, and just fill over the edge and then sand it all down. And hopefully that'll give me the shape. So that's the plan anyway. So I've made three plastic circles. Uh, first one, obviously the same diameter as the tube. And then I've used a key and then uh, 10 cents in euros um, for the other layers, just to make a template. And then I've cut that out on plastic card. I've covered it in um, Humber model filler. I've let it dry, so I'm just gonna sand it down. Hopefully that'll give me that shape that I'm after. Well, I've been working on the uh, fuel storage tanks and I've made these two with the plastic card circles, as I described as I can do, and then I've put filler on and rubbed it down to give it the shape. And now, originally, the idea was to have them this way and then I've got some support made to hold them up, but they just look out of scale. They look way too big. Um, so I'm going to put them this way. So obviously, I'll take the bottom off because they're a bit wobbly. Um, I'm doing the, that way, uh, similar to how the fuel storage tanks are at the uh, Didcot depot. Okay, so I've just taken those tubes, I've taken the bottoms, well, what's now the bottom, so one of those ends off, so they stand upright, and then I've used uh, two centimetre wide strips of card wrapped round and glued on, and I've just filled in the joins here, so but they'll be seen from that angle. And that'll be the two uh, fuel tower storage towers. So I probably just need some ladders to go up there and then maybe some railings on the top. And then I'll sort of box it in a uh, walled area and then have a few pipes here and there to represent the, where the fuel goes in and comes out, etc. Um, and also, you'll need painting. Right then, this is the fuel storage tanks, uh, minus the pipe work that I need to add. And then I'm going to build a wall around the base. Um, but I've added ladders and railings, as you can see. So the ladders are the end scale um, ladders from Plastistrap. So I know they're a little bit under scale, but they'll do the job. And then the uh, railings go around the ladder to stop anyone who's going to fall off from seriously hurting themselves. I mean, they're, they're still going to hurt themselves. Uh, that's just made from micro strip that I've just bent round. So it, it's a little uneven in shape, but I think it looks all right. It looks pretty good. Um, the railings on the top, now they're a bit short for TT scale people. Uh, if I just grab this chap here and demonstrate. Yeah, let's have a, there you go. Oops. Tipped him over. So he's not really safe up there. I think he's fallen over, but you can see it goes up to about his ankles. Um, it looked right when I put it together, and then I measured it up. I was like, ooh, maybe not, but um, it'll do. Um, so they're just made from. Uh, ladders that I've cut away from some Hornby PGA wagons that I've been working on so I don't need the ladders anymore so I thought well they might work for a railing so they look the part they're just a little under scale but um, I think they look okay like that so I'm just gonna add some pipes at the top at the bottom and then that should be ready for painting Okay, I've built the uh, wall to go round the fuel tanks. Uh, the wall goes right round the perimeter. There's no way in, no gate or anything like that. That's to uh, stop any uh, vehicles from obviously crashing into the tanks and causing a huge fiery explosion. Uh, so to get in, I'm gonna need a ladder. Just, uh, I'm gonna put it probably in the back here between these two. So there's an access ladder to get up and in, and then you can reach these ladders. Uh, once that's done, well, I think I'll prime it up and paint it. There we are then, I've just test fitted it on this piece of wall here for the minute. Um, 
that's the ladder. I'm just gonna let the glue cure and dry and then I'm just gonna trim off any little sort of uh, overhang of the railings because they are just a little large to the rest of the build. Um, it's a bit wonky donky there, but it'll be all right. Uh, so yeah, quite pleased with that. And that's the fuel tanks pretty much modeled now. I might just try and put a little bit of filler in that railing there. I'm not sure how good that's gonna be, that's gonna hold. But um, just a little bit of a gap at the moment. Um, but yeah, ready for painting. Right then, uh, I've taken the parts outside, I've given them a prime, and then the walls and tanks I've just sprayed over with a humble brown. Um, that arc there was where a bug unfortunately decided to fly in the way, just as I was spraying. Uh, the perils of doing it outside. And the ladder's just been sprayed silver. So I'm going to use this Warn Effects acrylic fluid. Um, so I'm just going to rust these up a bit more and then apply this and then try and get the same effect as what I have on my signal box and station building on my 009 layout. Um, so I'm going to move on to that. Right then, uh, here they are then, all the pieces painted. Um, I didn't go for the Warn Effects acrylic fluid in the end because um, I started painting it and then I had a look at the uh, reference photo and it was very, very sort of minimal rust. There was just a few patches on it. So uh, that's what I've done here. I've just painted a few rust patches on and then used some uh, weathering wash just to make it a bit more grubby. And then I've used um, the number 50 Rebel Blue and then now I've, as a base coat and then put some white in, uh, mixed it up with some more blue just to dry brush a sort of lighter color on top to give that faded effect, uh, which kind of, you can kind of see in there, not very easy on the camera, but it is there. And um, yeah, I think that looks all right. Painted the floor and then I've done the walls. I still can't quite get the um, mortar effect right. I'm still trying to get that, but that looks okay. Um, I'm happy with that. So that's all the parts done, just need to let them dry. I've weathered these steps as well. Just give them a bit of a wash. Um, so yeah, I can glue that all together and stick that, well, I won't stick it on the layout just yet because I'm still working on it, but that's all ready to go. And there we are, that's the fuel tanks in place. Uh, I think I might just weather the uh, floor a little bit. It's looking a little clean at the moment, but uh, otherwise I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, so next job will be to do the bridges. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, I'll try to keep it short. I'll try to keep these things not too long. Um, hope you found it useful and sort of interesting. I know not a lot happened in this really, but as you can see, there is more happening. I've been building bridges to go at the end. And we'll cover that in the next episode as well. So, I hope to see you next time. If you like the video, then you know what to do. Click the old like button. And if you want to see more, click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, getting into that 3000 mark. So thank you very much for all the people that have been clicking that button. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.